So the patch 9.2.5 is out and yeah, pretty much most of the predictions were right and finally, after all this time, the Forsaken are ultimately getting a conclusion to their storyline and a start of a new one. From the quest line, we have learned that the Forsaken can manage to counter the Plague of Lordaeron that Sylvanas unleashed back in BFA and it proved to be stronger than anything we had ever seen before. Then we got a new cinematic with Kelly Manatil having a leading role but the Forsaken getting a council and most importantly the undead are now in a really unique position. They seem to be retreating from Gilneas and are led by multiple people. So what is all this new info and what does the future hold for the undead? If you guys are in the market for a new mouse, Steel Series might just be exactly what you're looking for. Recently, they sent me these two mice, Aerox 5 Wireless and the Wired version, and they are excellent mice. The main thing about them is that they're ultra lightweight, literally like a feather in your hand, but at the same time, the build feels quality with a very good sensor. Now, I especially like the wireless one because you can also wire it, and you can use it wireless with multiple modes, and it has an excellent battery life for a over 180 hours. The thing about Aerox 5 is that it is one of the most versatile mice on the market with 5 side buttons and you can use it for pretty much any game, although if you're a hardcore MMORPG player, Aerox 9 might be the best choice for you. Another cool thing as well is the SteelSeries GG app where you can customize your hardware, lighting, macros, furthermore you can even record gameplay with GG moments at the click of a button. Make sure to check out my link in the description below and get your own Aerox Steel Series mouse. After the Night Elves, I'd say the Forsaken are the next down the line in terms of injustice down to them with all of these storylines and spotlight as they have actually been a huge focus of Battle for Azeroth, however they were abandoned by the Banshee Queen Sylvanas and they have literally just been in this weird state of limbo for like years. Sylvanas baited the alliance with Burning Teldrassil to attack their only real homeland and uh, she then just decided to blight it so that no one can Habit former Lord on anymore. While this seemed kind of a badass move at the start, you might think, damn, what happens to the Forsaken now? And we literally didn't even know where they have been living this entire time. To make this matter even worse, most of them followed Savannah's blindly in the Civil War, even though she worked against her interest while she did terrible things. And yeah, she just disappeared and told them they are nothing toy soldiers and left. And then we went through the Shadowlands and literally nothing has been going on with the Forsaken for two whole years. Even Bane got more action in the new expansion and Oribos. So now, finally, as 9.2.5 was released after all this time, their storyline continues and I gotta say, it is pretty good, a lot of events have happened, there is a pretty elaborate storyline and we go everywhere from Oribos to Lordaeron to Maldraxxus and ultimately their storyline not only gets a pretty good conclusion, but it also gets a completely new start with a lot of potential for the future. So without further ado, let us examine all the new info that we have and what this will mean for the Forsaken later down the line. As we had already data mined previously, a gathering of sorts happens in Lordaeron, however it isn't THE gathering as I had expected myself where the Alliance and the Horde united the older families, but instead it is a gathering of the most important Forsaken leaders in order to cleanse their former homeland of the plague that Savannah's had unleashed and also in order to determine the future leadership of the Forsaken and through this gathering we even learn a lot of really interesting lore bits. So, as you may already be aware, Kalia Menethil is an undead and the sister of Arthas, the daughter of Terranas, but she is a light bound undead, so a completely different sort when compared to the Forsaken as she was resurrected by the light and really is a race of her own. Now in the quest line, the Forsaken at the start are either kinda indifferent of her and some just outright oppose her as they don't really see her as one of their own. While they have gathered there to discuss the leadership, the future leadership, the main goal of this questline is to do something about the plague and apparently the master apothecary has a genius plan. The entire idea consists of employing these huge plague eaters to just mop up the entire place and while this sounds good in theory, it just completely falls right at the start as the plague eater is just gone. 
right away. Turns out that the Black Sylvanas Unleashed is not just your average black, but something crazy strong. In fact, even crazy for Madraxa standards, and they literally came up with this thing. So now, in order to proceed, the council proposes that they go to Madraxas and to learn from the creators of the plague itself on what to do, how to counter this, and to enhance the plague eaters. They need to gather a sample from the very heart of the corrupted area where the concentration is the largest, which to most is just a complete suicide mission. However, Kalia, in order to prove her worth, immediately takes on this task and she dons this big light shield and just goes together with us and brings back the sample. Then we venture to Modernaxus and discuss with Margrave Sindane as well as the Plague Lords. We get a bit of a digression as Kalia has a personal question that has nothing to do with the Plague, but that is relevant to the Forsaken questline. As you may be aware, Modernaxus is the army of the Shadowlands, literally the source of all the undeath stuff, the Plague, the State of Undeath, so you would wager they're quite the experts and the real people to ask all these questions. Kalia asks Margrave Sindane about how the Forsaken don't really like her as she's a different sort of undeath, but the Margrave tells her that she's looking at a difference where there is none. Necromancy is necromancy, undeath is undeath, it really doesn't matter from what source it was drawn from. Apparently, the source of undeath is just a battery that powers it, but it is essentially the same thing. So, the Forsaken were created by death magic, while Kalia was created by light magic, but ultimately, it is one and the same. This doesn't have really too much to do with the cleansing of Lordaeron, but it does have quite a bit to do with the Forsaken later on accepting Kalia as one of their leaders. So, in Maldraxxus, we continue with our mission, and that is to talk to the Plague Lord, and he attempts to use the sample, but it manifests itself in a terrible way, and he says this is a plague only a true sadist would make, as it is too much even for their standards, but ultimately, this, this is just the details. We use this sample and take it back to the apothecary, he then uses his cauldrons of plague to make a bunch of new plague eaters, and then we fly over Undercity, throw them around, and the plague is cleansed. Yeah, that is pretty much it. I, I gotta say, Personally, I'm a bit disappointed with how they dealt with this bag in just about 5 minutes total. Personally, I expected some sort of magic, some big light invasion, some grand cleansing event that would happen in another city. They would ultimately just clear the entire land, but no. It is essentially just these plague eaters just eating the entire thing and lord on his clans. Of course, I'm not complaining about the cleansing, but I do feel like it should have been done in a bit more uh, grandiose way. Like, there should have been a bit more of an elaborate planet play. So, now that the other city is back in Forsaken Hands, we get that cinematic that you can no doubt see with Lillian Voss and the lightbound Kelly Manatil. Looks like. I was wrong, and Kalia doesn't really become a ruler, she even says she never wanted to even take over the throne, but instead she just joins the council officially and almost everyone accepts her. Now, I'm not saying everyone is just taking her in with open hands, but they are more tolerant of her than they were at the start, and she is yet to prove that she is one of their own. Well, from the technical side, Kalia is of course not dead. Let's be real, she never really shared their pain. It isn't really the technicality of undeath that bothers the Forsaken, but it is the fact that they share the same lifestyle, the same goal, the same sorrow, and Sylvanas led them through this time she really understood what it means to be a Forsaken. Kelly Manatil, on the other hand, was just kind of shoehorned into this state artificially, so she doesn't really understand deep down what it means to be a Forsaken. She also gets a bit of a cringe name, I gotta admit, the Pallid Lady, and now they're literally just calling her that. I know they're going with the entire Dark Lady watch over you thing, and now she isn't the Dark Lady, as the Dark Lady is obviously bad, but she is the Light Lady, but calling her the Light Lady would be kind of weird, so the palette version is there, but in my opinion, it sounds even weirder. If you don't know the word, it literally just means the Pale Lady, which is attributed to her skin color, the mix of Undeath and the Light. Ultimately though, as the Pallid Lady is accepted into the so-called Desolate Council that are now the rulers of the Forsaken, and it turns out they will never really have a single ruler, or at least not in the foreseeable future. Now, what happens next is super interesting and something I will cover in a completely different video, but essentially, Kalia returns to Oribos and talks with Gan Greymane, thanks him for his assistance as he sent an undercover agent, saying that she 
will discuss with the council the withdrawal of the undead troops from Gilneas, which might mean big things for the future, especially with the current uncertain alliance for the relationship. So the reality is now that the Forsaken are led by a council, they have their city back, and they will more than likely take over the entirety of Tiraspol Glades, especially if they return Gilneas. I doubt really the alliance will try to hold their ground and just fight the horde. However, what is going on right now is that Under City wasn't really updated in any significant manner. There haven't been any serious visual changes to the entire area, at least in this patch that was just released. So this entire renewed leadership of the Undeath and them taking back their capital might happen in Dragonflight or maybe the expansion after. I feel like now they have kind of dealt with the story and they might update the game later down the line, but there just aren't any significant visual changes in 9.2.5. Honestly, I only hope that this doesn't end up becoming Gnomeregan 2.0 because if you remember, back in Cataclysm, they started retaking it yet nearly a decade and a half later, nothing was updated still, and the gnomes still haven't even received their city back, it has essentially stayed in the same state since that time. However, I do feel like this might be updated soon, maybe with the Dragonflight pre-patch, and maybe it might come together in a package with an Alliance Gilneas and a new and restored Undercity Tiraspol Glades. Thank you for watching, check out will we be getting Orc Paladins and Undead Druids in the future by clicking on the screen, and check out Owens Academy for videos on real world history. See you next time.